mean, she's been there with me for everything and knowing she's not here, that was difficult. She would probably be in, you know, row 10, section G or front row if she was feeling healthy. I didn't have the opportunity to have that, but I know she's watching down on me and very proud of me of the comeback I had. But uh, it just would have been dope to be in those seats and see her there. But other than that, it's cool. Jonathan Fagan. John, how difficult is it for a team on a losing streak and to have injuries? You've had the injuries, but now to have them keep coming and coming, how difficult is it to not be demoralizing in that kind of situation? Well, that's why I'm the leader of the team. That's why I have to keep these guys afloat. Um, it's something we deal with, and a lot of teams might have to deal with it throughout the year. We can't really control the aspect of that. Uh, me as a leader and a veteran guys to keep these guys above float, um, keep working with them, keep pushing them every day, and keep giving ourselves a chance to fight. Um, it's a battle that we're going through, but let's say it might be a team that might go through it two weeks from now. Um, we can't dwell on that, so you just got to take advantage of the chance you have and win the game you're supposed to win. And uh, just play hard. That's the most important thing we could do. And the easiest thing we could do is go out there and play hard every night. Thank you. Brian Bearfield. And John, that's what I was going to piggyback on. I know there's no moral victories in, in basketball, but, you know, how proud are you of those guys? You know, still y'all still competing through adversity like this? Oh, it was great, man. That, that's the most important thing about it. Nobody's putting their head down like I'm telling them every day. Keep fighting. Don't give up. Um, it's a bump in the road, but always be the next man up and just give ourselves a chance. All you can do is go out there and play hard and give yourselves a chance. Um, and that's all we're doing right now is just giving ourselves a fight. Brianna Holmes. Hey, John. So I know looking at, you know, seeing Alex on the sidelines for these games that you played against the Wizards, I mean, how does it feel to um, show – you know, the, someone who played a huge part in your recovery and you coming back to – play in front of someone like him? Uh, I think he's embracing, he's enjoying it. Um, I think he wished he was on the other side of being there with me because all the hard work and dedication we put in the last two years. But um, it was just great to see a lot of familiar faces. And uh, I know there's a lot more familiar faces I wish I could see, but I didn't get the chance to see because of COVID. And uh, I know a couple of people that's probably throughout this arena that has been supporting me since I was a kid for 10 years that I didn't get a chance to see because they got laid off because of the pandemic. Uh, I wish them the best. I um, know they played a major part of me becoming a, a young boy to a grown man. Um, they got all my love and support forever. I wish the best for them. And um, if I have the opportunity when I come back next year, we can have fans. I definitely want to get those people in the stand. So I will be looking forward to buying a lot of tickets for people that have looked out for me and helped me grow up to be who I am today and let them know that I haven't forgot about them. All right, we have time for two more questions. Hoop District. John, good to see you. Uh, what was working for you so well in the first half? Uh, you were pretty aggressive getting to the line, finishing at the rim, uh, had the big dunk. Um, uh, I still feel like I played the same way in the second half, aggressive. I just didn't get a lot of calls that I got in the first half. I got 10 free throws. I didn't get any in the second half, and I felt like I was still attacking. Um, give credit to them. They did a lot better job of loading up on me and making me uh, kick the shooters. And um, like I said, I'm believing my guys, no matter who it is, shooting the ball. I see these guys work on it every day, so I want to make the right play. And um, I missed some easy shots that I wish I would have made, like I did in the first half and the second half. And then some, uh, a couple of my guys missed some shots that we felt like it was good shots. And uh, they were making shots, and that's basically determines the game. And last question, Jay Rochelle. Hey, John. Uh, good to see you back in D.C. Uh, you guys are 11 and 16 now, sitting in second to the last in the West. I know it's a lot more game left to be played, and you guys have been competing you know, as best as you can, given your circumstances. Do you all think it's still possible for you all to make a playoff push in the position that you guys are in right now? Yeah, for sure. I think it's a lot of time left. Um, most important thing is getting guys healthy, um, staying safe away from COVID and not having the safety protocols because that's serious. You can miss seven games, I mean, seven days or 10 to 14 days. But, um, yeah, just keep fighting. I mean, it's a hole that we're in. Uh, we know it's a process of rebuilding with a lot of people we added new, um, getting rid of James, um, adding a lot of young guys into this mix, trying to get them to understand the game at a different level. And uh, that's my job as a leader. That's job to make the job easy for Coach Silas and the coaching staff. And I believe in this organization, everything they're doing, the way we're moving forward. And uh, I got to keep continuing to be the leader when we're losing and when we're winning. All right. Thank you, John. All right.